If you've ever watched in a friend video, you know that he likes to AFK, and in one of his recent videos, he took it to the extreme by AFKing Sarachnus for thousands of KC in order to get his hands on the pet. To do this, he geared up in full tank, snagged himself an Ellie, and went to town. And by went to town, I mean he basically just left his computer and went into town because he pretty much didn't have to do a single thing to get that pet. Well, that video got me thinking, is there anywhere else in the game that you could fully recline, maybe throw on a little bit of Paper Mario while you skate, and let your gear do all the heavy lifting to get you a new pet? Enter the Fight Caves. This was once RuneScape's most iconic and difficult PVM challenge, but today I'm going to be attempting to answer the question, can you actually just AFK the Fight Caves, and if so, could you even AFK your way to a Jad pet? Davidas, this one's for you. Now first things first, I'd categorize the fight caves as having two parts, the waves and Jad. At level 702 and with a max hit of 97, we all know that AFKing through the Jad portion is not realistic. Short of some miracle RNG or speedrun strats to take out Jad as quickly as possible, AFK Jad just isn't going to happen. So for this challenge, my goal is to get through the waves and all the way up to Jad with as little interaction as possible. To do this, I need to get my hands on the right gear. So I dug deep into my pockets and I snagged myself some of the best defensive gear that the game has to offer. Among these tanky items is the Blood Fury. The Blood Fury gives a passive healing effect that's going to be absolutely critical if I'm not going to be paying attention during the fight caves. Together, this setup is going to make me an impenetrable force for this challenge. At least hopefully, otherwise this might fail spectacularly. Oh, and I'm going to be praying mage the entire time because, well, look at these mage defense bonuses. I'll also mention that I'm going to be doing this on my max combat main. Sorry peers, but this one is probably not going to work out for you. Okay, this is the inventory setup that I'll be going with. I'm completely guessing on supplies here, so there's like an 80% chance that we run out of everything halfway through. With that said, let's get to it. I'm going to relog right before I go into the caves, so you can watch my login timer throughout the run. To evaluate how AFK this is, I'm going to be keeping track of how many times I interact with my client during the waves. For the purpose of simplicity, I'll be considering an interaction anytime I have to focus my attention back to the game to do something like brew, re-up my prayer, or repot my super combat, and then that interaction period ends when I stop paying attention again. I'll throw a tracker on screen during the challenge so you can see how I'm doing, and then if we do somehow manage to complete this challenge, I'll calculate some stats for you at the end. While I start my AFK Fight Cave adventure in the background, let's talk about concerns here. There are six unique monsters that you encounter before you reach Jad. I'm really only concerned with three of them though. First, we have the bats which drain one of your prayer points every time they attack you. If I get unlucky with NPC targeting, these could be constantly hitting me, causing me to break AFK to sip prayer potions more often. And then there's the level 180 healers. These guys like to heal themselves and other mobs during the waves, which could cause some issues if I can't out DPS their heals. Lastly, the majors. While you'd normally be ranging these guys, since I'll be using a hosta, I'll be within melee distance, meaning they can also melee me. And even though my melee defense bonuses are high, they can hit over 30, which makes them a little bit of a wild card in this run. I will be praying mage from the time the majors first appear until the end of the waves, because again, without mage protection, this run would not last very long. Now the run's been playing out in the background, and finally, at the 7 minute and 17 second mark, I am breaking AFK to sip a dose of super combat potion. So far, this has been ridiculously hands off, but let's plow ahead and see if this keeps up. Alright, about 10 minutes later and I'm closing down wave 30, the next wave is going to bring the majors, which is where things could potentially go sideways very quickly. Before the mage wave starts, I'm going to throw on protect from mage, brew, restore, and super combat up, and just hope for the best I guess. Okay, so far so good. The blood fury heals are going to be really critical here because I do occasionally get smacked a big hit, ow, like that one and that is going to bump the interaction counter up once again. All things considered, this has been very AFK so far, and I'm actually not really sure what to do with all this AFK time. I guess I could do my taxes, or the dishes. Oh, I could take a shower. It's me, Mario. 
All right, I had a much better idea. I'm going to see if I can beat a Super Mario 64 level before I have to interact with my client again. Any Nintendo 64 fans out there? Unironically, this game actually has better graphics than old school RuneScape. All right, we are inside of the castle and I am going to be racing Koopa the Quick to the top of the mountain. This is now a Mario video. Maybe you have a Zuckhelm and can speedrun the Inferno, but can you beat Koopa the Quick faster than I just did? I'm just saying. Just passing through the wave 40 mark now. Wave 50, the interactions have been few and far between so far and things are looking good. We are going strong on wave 60. The supplies are starting to look a little bit thin here, but I think we can pull this out. Ah, wave 62 and I'm just barely coming up short on RNG for this last one. I am a stubborn man though, so even though I'm going to pay attention to this final major, I will stay within melee distance and accept my fate no matter the outcome. Outcome. Success! I am very pleased with this result. I honestly wasn't sure if I'd be able to AFK my way all the way up to Jad, but now with the final wave upon me, let's finally give this run a bit of attention and get this fire cape. There it is! Jad goes down, and I am a one fire cape richer. Total time is just barely over an hour. That is actually way faster than I would have guessed this would take. That's not even bad. Now, obviously, you would be AFKing the fight caves for a reason, which probably has less to do with getting your first fire cape and more to do with getting the Jad pet. For that reason, I will be gambling my fire cape for the pet. Can we snag it for this video? <laughs> so I didn't get the pet this time. But with an average AFK fight cave runtime of about an hour, and the Jad pet chance being an effective rate of about 1 in 100 if you're off task and also gamble your cape, this would make a roughly 100 hour grind. Throwing some Jad Slayer tasks in there would also help speed it up though. So something that I would be asking if I were watching this video is how long was I able to AFK in between interactions? I carefully watched back the entire run from start until I got to Jad, and I noted the timestamps for each interaction, and then I divided the run length by the total number of interactions. I calculated the average AFK duration to be roughly 4 minutes long, which for the fight caves is actually shockingly good. I also wanted to make sure that my outliers didn't skew the times too much, so after throwing out my two longest and two shortest durations, the adjusted AFK time was actually slightly longer, but still right around 4 minutes. Obviously RNG is going to play a factor here with how much damage you're dealt, but also how much damage you heal with the Blood Fury. It's entirely possible to get comboed out while you're not paying attention, but if you're even occasionally keeping an eye on your prayer and HP, you should be able to AFK your way through the waves without too many issues. If you're interested in seeing the full run for yourself, I will upload the raw run as an unlisted video and I'll link that in the description below. Be sure to leave a like and sub on your way out if you enjoyed, and if you like out of the box old school content, Content, consider checking out this video about five insanely unique Iron Man accounts. As always, I'm Zort, and thank you so much for watching.